So we are at the bottom of the Huckle, not Huckleberry, we are at the bottom of the Little Huckleberry Mountain Trailhead. Bottom of the trailhead. That doesn't even make any sense. All right, so we are at the Little Huckleberry Mountain Trailhead. Uh, we're gonna activate this summit. So I'm here with Brian, WK7AMM. Yeah, Kilo 7 Alpha Mike Mike. And uh, we're just gonna hike up this. It should be about 1800 feet of climbing over, do you remember how many miles? 2.3. 2.3, that's actually kind of steep. Um, yeah, 1800 feet over 2.3 miles. Turn the camera around, just kind of give you an idea of what the trailhead looks like. Little Huckleberry, no campfires, that's good. We weren't planning on it. It's like 80 degrees, which I'm not used to trailheads being actually warm. But um, <clears throat> as I've started to not do in these videos, I'm not gonna force you to listen to me talk while I'm uh, walking because I start breathing heavily and it gets really hard to listen to and that requires way too many cuts for me to make it watchable. Um, so unless there's anything particularly interesting on this trail, which so far looks like it's well-maintained and in good shape, I will meet you at the top of the mountain with my radio set up. Um, it doesn't show up on the GoPro, but uh, it immediately gets very steep. <laughs> like this is, yeah, this is steep. So that's something that's good to know is just how steep this trail is going to be for you. Um, so keep that in mind, but don't let it stop you. Okay, we've done about 1100 feet of climbing. And uh, just so you know, if you're one who's sensitive to it, there's a lot of rocks here in this section before the trail. It's gonna do a little fish hook um, and veer north toward the peak. So there's a little trail, trail port. It's a, it's a very steep trail, just know that. If you're gonna do this, be ready to hike a steep trail. So we're about 200 vertical feet from the summit and now we see why it is called Huckleberry Mountain. Because there are huckleberries like everywhere. Um, yeah, it's very aptly named uh, peak. Your perfect like subject, yeah. <laughs> All you have to do is sit there and pick huckleberries and eat them and that's pretty much all the audience needs to see. All right, we are approaching the summit. I dare say we are probably already in the activation zone for Huckleberry Mountain. And yeah, it's sort of like, just like that, you're here. There's a view of Klickitat, Mount Adams. Oh wait or Pado. I sort of like the name Pado better for it. And then Mount Rainier. Uh, some other intrepid hikers. Hey. How's it going? Good. There's Goat Mountain. Uh, that's a different view of Larch Mountain. From this side, the other Larch Mountain. And there's, there's Larch Mountain, there's Larch Mountain, there's Silver Star. Uh, that trees, I think it's too hazy for, yeah, Hood is like in the haze over there. Whiskey Uniform 7 Hotel. I got Whiskey Uniform 7 Hotel, QSO. Yeah, QSL, QSL, how you doing this afternoon? You're about a 5x3, five 5x3 by three, five by three in Seattle. All right, copy the 5x3 in Seattle, and I've got you as a very, very clear 5x9. Actually, I got you 10 over 5x9 down here on Huckleberry Mountain. Fine, have fun up there, and uh, we'll look for the report later. Uh, 73. Absolutely, thanks, it's 73. Whiskey, Whiskey 7 Delta. I got Whiskey, Whiskey 7 Delta, QSO. KD7 uh, QOW from Whiskey Whiskey 7 Delta. You're about a 3 by 4, 3 by 4 near Seattle, over. Copy the 3 by 4, you are a 5 by 9, 5 by 9, over. Okay, QSL, thanks a lot, 7 3, and uh, good luck with the rest of your adventures today, WW7 Delta. Thanks in 7 3, Kilo Delta 7, Quebec Oscar Whiskey CQ Soda. November 7, Papa Mike Bravo. Got November 7, Papa Mike Bravo, QSO. Roger, roger, and you're about at 5-3 into Beaverton, Oregon. 
Copy the 5-3. You're 20 over 5-9 over here on Huckleberry. Perfect. Thanks to uh, 7-3. Seven, 7-3. Three. Seven, three. Kilo, Delta 7, Quebec, Oscar Whiskey, CQ Soda. November Whiskey, 7 Echo. November Whiskey, 7 Echo, QSO. QSL, QSL. All right, got you 20 over 5-9 up here. You're 5 at 5, 55 Oregon. All right, copy, copy the 55 in Oregon, and thanks for chasing. Thanks in 7-3. 73, thanks for the summit. Kilo, Delta 7, Quebec, Oscar Whiskey, CQ Soda. Can you hear that? Is that How's that going? Okay, that's on 15. Um, yeah, what I'm going to do while you do this is I'm going to jump over, I'm going to set up to jump over to two meters for a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. I can do S2S without spotting, so it's easier to just pop in and out. But. Yeah, but I'll, uh, yeah, no, that, that works for me. Okay, so what we're doing now, um, I've got four contacts on 40 so far, um, so I have enough to qualify or to activate the summit uh, to get points. Uh, and Brian is on CW over here. And the thing about having our antennas this close together um, is that um, when I'm broadcasting on single sideband, it completely obliterates uh, anything he can hear. So we're gonna, I'm gonna QSY over to two meters and I'll show you my two meter setup. I have a way of doing that for, with this radio. It'll be pretty fun. But yeah, Brian, Brian is over here with his KX2, KX3, I got that wrong. He's working on a summit to summit. I'm not, I'm not expecting him to respond to me. I'm just uh, kind of like watching what he's doing. And hopefully I'm not distracting him too much. Now that he's sending code, I'm gonna show you kind of what that ends up doing on my radio because I'll probably see his, see and or hear his uh, Morse code on my radio. So even being on different bands isn't enough to uh, get rid of the problem, but we'll see. There it is. See it on my spectrum scope. This is what somebody transmitting on CW does on your HF radio, and their antennas are really close to each other. So anyway, while he does that, I'm going to go ahead and get set up for two meters. Okay, so I have my two meter set up ready to go here, and here's what I do on two meters. I've kind of learned this over time. So here's the radio. I have just a short piece of RG174, and I just use this dual band, like cheap dual band antenna. Uh, this is a little half wave thing I got on Amazon for pretty cheap and I just kind of hang it from the guy line on my antenna vertically polarized and that's that's how I um, transmit and receive on two meters with this radio because I decided to not bring my HT because you know I'm being miserly about weight so I'm gonna start I'm gonna spot myself because I'm gonna do two meters while Brian is doing um, Brian's doing, S or doing Morse code over here so that I'm not interfering with his work. Um, I'm gonna turn the RF gain up, turn the squelch up just to get it. So my only complaint about the IC705 for um, doing two meters is that the squelch, but there's not like a squelch ring like there is on an HT. So it's not really easy to get to the squelch to adjust it. But that is what it is, you know. Um, we'll see. So I got 10 watts here because I've got the battery. So 10, hopefully 10 watts with uh, two meters is enough to make it work better. Kilo Delta 7, Quebec Oscar Whiskey, CQ Soda. November Delta 7 Yankee. I got November Delta 7 Yankee, QSO. Thank you, that's all that. I have you about a five and five, five and five in Vancouver. Copy the five, five, and I've got you as a five and nine, five and nine. Good, Delta 5 9, uh, hope you're staying cool out there. Oh yeah, it's beautiful up here. It's a perfect breeze and it's exactly the right temperature. Glad to hear it, glad to hear it. Um, I'll try and dig up Ann. Um, she's over on the discriminator right now. I'll let her know that uh, you're uh, out of the area. Uh, Indy 7 Y, monitoring. All right, thanks a lot. Yeah, that'll, that'd be awesome. I'll take a summit to summit. Kilo Delta 7, Quebec Oscar Whiskey, CQ Soda. N7 LKL. I got N7 LKL, QSO. Affirmative, you're a 5'9 here in downtown Portland. 
copy the 5-9 into downtown Portland, and I got you a 5-9 on Huckleberry Mountain. Sounds good. Enjoy your activation. Take care. Thanks, and 7-3, Kilo Delta 7, Quebec Oscar Whiskey CQ Soda. B7QW, K7AHR. I got K7AHR, QSO. So, I'm going to walk back to the edge of the activation zone for you. Um, I'll be just a moment. KD7QOW, CQ Soda. You are 5959 from Whiskey Some Whiskey. Uh, uh, Lima Charlie, 085. Okay, I got Whiskey 7 Whiskey, Lima Charlie 085. That's correct. Yes, yes, yes. What's your reference? My reference is Whiskey 7 Whiskey slash LC 041. Copy 041, copy 041. Uh, thank you very much for the service summit. Great to catch you. Great to uh, pop right back in the easy. We're just on our way down. All right, great timing. I'm glad I got you. So I've got four contacts on 40 meters so far. Uh, I made three more QSOs on uh, uh, two meter FM. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get myself a snack and eat something while Brian is doing uh, CW and then I'll come back for uh, some 20 meter action a little bit later. But um, I think right now I can go ahead and talk about the summit. A little bit so um, according to my phone let's take a look at what the phone tells me I have um, for uh, just how I got up here so um, the scent was about 1600 feet of climbing so you know it was a pretty steep trail over about 2.3 2.4 miles uh, not bad overall but it's you know something to keep in mind the uh, views from the summit are absolutely fantastic. We have a great like first person view of Mount Adams right there and then uh, Mount Rainier. And if you go around, you can see Mount St. Helens. We, um, wow, it looks like it might actually be raining out there. Anyway, we suspect that there's a view of Mount Hood over here, but it seems to be shrouded in clouds. Um, I hope that's just fog and not rain. There is VHF potential on the summit because uh, just with this uh, um, dual band half wave I've got hanging from my guy wire. I got um, I got three VHF contacts and that's at two o'clock on a Thursday so that's not doing bad. Uh, using the same carbon fiber mast that I prefer to use that I like to use when I have a long hike. I opted for the 705 this time. Um, it's worked for me. Of course I suspect I would have more contacts already if I'd have been running 100 watts but um, 100 watts weighs more. Although, when I added it up, it's only about two pounds more. Uh, antenna goes over to here, it's tied off to a tree. Um, I will be, when I come back to HF, after uh, Brian is, uh, after the CW well dries up on Brian, uh, I'll come back over to my operating position over here, where I've got the uh, winder slash unun for my NFED half wave hanging from this tree and the tuner which I always carry with me now and that really weird looking insect that was interesting some kind of wasp uh, and not a bad view out here really some gnarly looking cascades over here so yeah moderate hike uh, good activation so far seven contacts total I'm gonna make some more QSOs before I head down but uh, like I said time for me to have lunch all right so addendum to addendum um, because or dent to the end of this thing so um yeah this is my setup here i think i already pointed out what my setup is little 10 watt radio um running an nfed half wave uh with a counterpoise and um when i post when i uh, uh i just uh spotted myself on 20 meters and uh you all know him foxtrot 4 whiskey bravo november he got me on 10 watts ssb this guy i i can't believe it so that was all the way to France on 10 watts, single sideband. Um, he's got, that guy's got great antennas. That's gotta be what it is, right? Yeah, he's got great antennas. Anyway, I just point, thought I'd point that out. We're over here in Southwest Washington and got to France on 10 watts. And it just makes me like, I don't know, maybe I'm just not gonna bother with a 100 watt radio anymore. Forget it. Maybe I'll just start transmitting with one watt and see, see what happens. I don't know if wattage even matters anymore. What's real, what's not? 
Anyway, great little summit. Uh, we might see if we can, if we have time to hit another summit or not today, um, just because we're already out here. But anyway, 7-3, go out there and play with your radio.